church in time. What about you tonight? You're here. You're mine. What do you set your mind on? Do you set your mind? Do you choose heavenly thinking? What do you think about? What do you allow to fill your thoughts, your imaginations? You know, Hollywood, social media, perversion, list is up. You allow these things to drive your thought patterns? Or do you set your mind? This word set is a power board. It locks in a direction. It refuses to be moved or turned aside. A number of years ago, I preached this in, in a prescient discipleship. I'd come to prayer in the morning, and there was this young lady that was always jogging. And uh, I had no intention of ever, but I mean, and her ponytail. She had this ponytail, and it would fly, and other things would fly. <laughs> and I remember I'm, I'm looking one day, and God said, that's none of your business. <laughs> and I set my mind. Job said, he set his mind, he would not look upon a handmaid to lust. Think on heaven. You have the ability to choose your thoughts. And this is where victory comes. Every sin begins with the thought. Impulse. You can say, I'm not interested in pleasing the world. I'm not going to because people will come used by hell to invade with thoughts in your mind. Set your mind. Philippians 4 8. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever is of a good report, if there's any virtue, anything praiseworthy, think on these things. Now, Paul wouldn't write that if it wasn't possible. This is what I want you to think about. I want you to build rooms of pure, lovely, good report. Virtue, praiseworthy. It's not just quit thinking bad thoughts, but you have to develop new godly thoughts. Let this mind which is in Christ Jesus be also in you. And our well, the text, 2 Corinthians 10, 6. Be ready to punish all disobedience when you're obedient. You have to put to death, that word punish, put to death these old flesh thoughts. Jesus said, give an example of a man who built his mind or his life or his house on the sand. When the storms of life came, mighty was the fall. I'm closing. And he said, there's another man who built his mind on the rock. That rock was Christ. And the storms of life still come. But you stand. We have a few pictures here of this Winchester house. Some of the stairs. Stairs. Look at this. They go nowhere. They go to dead end one. Next one. I think there's another one. It goes down. I mean, and there's this this one on the right. It just runs into a wall. This woman, some of the steps would be this high. Some of them would be this high. 
I wonder about your mind. They liken your mind to a house with rooms. What are you building? Are you building with God's construction, with His tools, the Word of God, Holy Ghost, fruit of the Spirit? Who has designed and constructed how you process life? This is the difference between victory and defeat. This is the difference between dominion and dying in the wilderness. This is the difference between going into your inheritance or falling. This is the difference between going back to the streets of the world or sin or craziness or be not conformed to this world. Paul said, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you might prove what is that good and acceptable. This is a game changer. You change your mind, you'll change your world. You'll change your behavior. You'll change your language. You'll change who you are. Let that mind, which is in Christ Jesus, be in you. When this begins to happen, hell cannot snare you, can't cook you. Some of you sitting here, come live for God, say all the right things, and then a few months later you're back. Back in the streets, back in... What happened? Nothing ever happened up here. You can be here, you heard me say, in this church for 10 years, and the right chemistry, and you still think, <coughs> like the world, and hell will use it. My mind is not always my friend. Every thought you have is not God. Have you figured that out? <laughs> Can't trust everything that comes, you know. Got to filter it through God's Word and Spirit. I ask you to bow your head with me this evening. For we come by the blood and by the Holy Ghost and by your Word and truth. Shivalemo Ramashanda. God, we love your name. Thank you, God, for these people. You're here tonight. Before we do anything else, born again is such a miracle. To be born again. It's more than just sins forgiven. It is that. But it's so much more. Old things will pass away and all things will become new. And your life and you will begin to change into the likeness and image of God. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's such a glorious miracle of God. You're here tonight. You say, Pastor Campbell, I need to be saved. I need to be born again. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of living and acting and repeat upon repeat my old messed up mess. And I'm tired of it. I, God, I need a new life. I need some new chapters that have your signature, your handprint, and your design. It comes and begins. You must be born again, Jesus said, or you'll never see the kingdom of God. Such a powerful thing. You're here tonight. You say,